Hi guys, welcome to another edition of Cyber Reviews. And today I'm going to show you top iPhone secrets that you may or may not know, but I believe you don't know these ones. Have you ever failed? Are you listening? Damn. Now let me explain what emergency mode is. We all know what emergencies are like. You might have an armed robbery or perhaps you slept in the bathroom and you fell and you can't get up or any kind of daily emergency which might happen and threaten your life and you need to reach out to the emergency services like the police the ambulance or some loved ones to come and check up on you or to get help so what you need to do is to press the power button or the side button five times in quick succession normally to activate emergency mode on your phone you need to press and hold the power button together with the volume down button for a few seconds and then you will get a shutdown and emergency mode screen at least this happens on the iphone x and newer models be careful though it makes a lot of noise when it's going into emergency mode so if you're in a situation where you don't want to draw attention to yourself you need to use this with care however you can turn this feature off by going to settings and searching for emergency so pause the video if you're using an iphone go and do this so that you may never know when you would need this feature now this next secret is something that i have experienced and it was so much of a pain for me it was like a thorn in my flesh i'm trying to make calls on my iphone and then you just see call ended it's like the moment you press the number to dial then you see call ended i don't know if you've ever experienced that before but if you've been experiencing this then this video is the right video for you to solve that issue all right, so if you keep getting the call field when you attempt to make a call, just dial star hash 31 hash and you'd be able to continue making your calls. It works perfectly. Hey, if you're getting value out of this video, press the like button and share so that somebody who needs to know these things like any Apple user you know, share it with them so that they can also find out these secrets. Now, who wants to retype common text like an email address? So, for example, my email address is very long cyberactivefrank at gmail.com. And even the cyber is CYB3R. You know, so typing it is very, very difficult. Okay. Well, did you know your iPhone has a built in shortcut system that lets you type something like Gmail to expand to your full email address as you type? So to activate this, you need to go to the settings, then go to general, then head over to keyboard, then text replacement to make your own shortcuts. Try it. It makes life so much easier. Do this hard work once and just enjoy typing on your keyboard. Now, speaking of keyboard, did you know that you could install a custom keyboard on your iPhone? See, I used to complain, complain, complain like... <sighs> I've been somebody who has been using Android for a very long time. And if you watch my video where I spoke about six things that Android phones have that iOS don't have, you notice that keyboard placed like number one. Okay. So Android, you can customize the keyboard. You can install different types of keyboards. Apparently on iPhones too, you can install custom keyboards like SwiftKey. See, there are many advantages of installing custom keyboards. For example, you can begin to use swipe gestures and get better prediction when typing. Now with iOS 13, Apple introduced swipe on their keyboards. But if you are like on an, an older model, which is not supporting the latest iOS version, you can just go and install a custom keyboard like Swift key. All right. And then you'd be able to get swipe gestures on your iPhone. Plus, it has a clipboard. Now, this clipboard is not like the Android one. You know, the Android clipboard, it's amazing. See, when you, you, you use the Android keyboard, you can copy and paste so many different items or data. So, let's say I was reading a passage and part of the passage was about person A. The next part was about person B. And then the next one was about person C. On Android, I can copy person A, A's data and then I'll put it in my clipboard b c just like that okay so i don't need to just copy and paste only one item i can have a clipboard full of different things i've copied including pictures but on the iphone 
Installing Swift key gives you access to a clipboard, but that clipboard has only one item, which is the last item you copied. At least we'll take it because half a loaf is better than none. Now, one thing that iPhones have been accused of is that their battery capacity does not match what the Android devices give. Okay. So for example, now we have Android devices which have like 6,000 milliamperes of battery capacity, but even the iPhone 11 Pro Max still doesn't have 4,000 milliamperes of battery capacity. Just that because Apple produces both the hardware and the software, they are able to, you know, optimize the experience so that your battery lasts really long and it's a good thing. But if you want your battery to last even longer, all you need to do is to put your phone on low power mode. Now on your iPhone, low power mode is activated when you reach like 20% of your battery capacity, then it tells you low power mode and you can choose to cancel or turn it on. But did you know you can actually go into the settings and enable low power mode even if you are at 100% and trust me, your battery will last extremely long. Low power mode works by turning off a few aspects of your iPhone that are unnecessary like background refresh for apps, Siri's always on listening feature and some more processor intensive visual effects. You shouldn't notice any big changes while using your iPhone. So feel free to keep low power mode whenever you are worried about your battery getting too low. Now in my video about 6 Android features that iPhones don't have, I spoke about the fact that on an Android device, you can close all open apps at once by just clicking the close all button. But on your iPhone, usually when you want to close apps, especially in iPhone X and these newer phones which use swipe gestures, you first swipe up to indicate all the open apps and you begin to swipe away, swipe away, swipe away, swipe away. Did you know that instead of swiping one, 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 you can use two fingers to swipe two apps away at a time. And it's even crazier. You can use three fingers to swipe away three apps at a time. So Apple, if you're going to allow people to be swiping two fingers and three fingers, why don't you just give them that close all button? <sighs> Is this too much to ask for? I mean, seriously? Now, for those of you who like to take a lot of pictures with your phone, sometimes I see people trying to take pictures and they are trying to hit that white circle on the camera app. Okay, you know that white circle at the bottom that you press to take the pictures. Well, did you know you can take pictures using the volume up and down buttons so that you don't need to struggle pressing the white circle. And especially when you're taking pictures in landscape mode, the volume up and down becomes closer to like your left hand or your right hand depending on which hand you're using and you can easily click on those to take the pictures like a professional camera speaking of the camera did you know that you can change the settings of the camera when you go to the settings you can set the frame rate and enable the default resolution for recording videos in the settings so just head over to the settings and search for camera there's so much more you can do with your iphone camera than you know Right now, you might just be doing point and shoot, but go into the camera settings and see amazing stuff that you can do. Still on the topic of cameras, if you find that your pictures look blown out or some areas are too bright, just tap on the brightest area of the screen before you take the photo and everything will be back to what it should be. Finally, when you're filming with your iPhone, press and hold any part of the screen for about 3 seconds before you click the record button. This ensures that the exposure and focus is locked and that way you end up with more professional pictures or videos. See, some people will be recording videos like content creators on YouTube and stuff and when they are moving from scene to scene or shot to shot, you realize that the sky will get overblown or overexposed before it will come back to normal, then the person's face will become dark for the camera will now adjust. So by just tapping and holding the screen for 3 seconds, you lock the autofocus and then you lock the white balance. Then you'd be able to get more professional pictures. I hope these tips or secrets were helpful to you, I don't know, but if you like them, click the like button. And if you're new to the channel, I do mobile app reviews, I do mobile phone comparisons and reviews so that it helps you when you want to buy a new phone and you don't know which one to go for or you want to buy a new phone and you don't want to be duped by some people in circle or some scammers and they'll give you some fake phones 
well i do all these kind of reviews so that you know the best phones to go for at whatever price budget that you have so if you like this video i have more comparison videos so click here to watch my comparison between the iphone x and the samsung galaxy s9 plus and click here for more amazing tech videos thanks bebre